is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are San Diego. Melvin Upton, the Padres left fielder, doing his share to aid the San Diego Padres to a 5-2 and two advantage against the Colorado Rockies. As we're set for game two of this three-game weekend series with Mark Grant, Dick Hamburg, we're pleased you're with us. A 4 nothing shutout win for San Diego last night that featured some power and some dandy, daring base running. I ask you a question, Friar Faithful, Mr. Enberg. Who doesn't like the first pitch fastball? Well, I'll tell you one guy who feasts on the first pitch fastball. It's Matt Kemp. Last night, oh my goodness gracious, he could feast on it with the best of them, righty, lefty. If it's up, middle, in, he is going to turn on it. So the numbers against the Rockies, why? Well, playing in the division really helps with the Dodgers and Padres. 419 average this season against the Colorado Rockies. He loves to hit against these rocks. 16 runs batted in and seven games against the Rockies. And how about this play by Upton? Just one of the rare things you see, a straight steal of home. Brought some electricity to the ballpark, caught the Rockies off guard. Everybody was yelling, but it was the slide. When, how can a guy slide like that and change direction and avoid the tag like Melvin Upton Jr.? Quite an athlete, reminiscent of Jackie Robinson. It was really, really fun to watch yeah. last night. And once again, straight steal of home. You never see that in the game of baseball. Yeah, a Lithuanian judge gave it a perfect score. Yeah. What a play by Melvin Upton. Well, big news for the Padres today. A.J. Preller has traded James Shields to the Chicago White Sox. The Padres get two players in return. We'll give you the details when we come back.
Here at Petco Park as James Shields is traded away to the Chicago White Sox. General Manager A.J. Preller went into detail about what went into the decision as well as the acquisition of starter Eric Johnson and prospect Fernando Tatis. Take a listen. We haven't been good enough. We haven't been good enough the last year and a half, you know, as a group, as a team, as an organization. And, um, you know, I think for us, it's, it's you know, we talk about it a lot. You know, it's really it's just building towards a, towards a championship level organization. He's got some pedigree as a high pick out of, out of out of Cal, and he's kind of been you know one of those guys up you know back and forth. hasn't really had the opportunity yet to you know get himself a, a sustained period of time you know in, the, in a big league rotation. Um, you know at various points in times we've seen a 90-95 fastball. Um, we've seen it. We've seen a good slider. Um, you know I think this year it's been more in that 89-92 range from a velocity standpoint. But I really think he's a guy 26 years old or so that you know I think we're looking at as a, as a rotation possibility. Got that, you know, the big league pedigree. He's a very intelligent kid. He's got good feel for the game. Um, you know, he's, he's a shortstop. He's a bigger body player. It's a pretty good athlete. You want to try to get to a point where we can be, you know, where, where you're contending every single year annually. You have a chance to contend and win and compete. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, I don't think any fan really wants to wants to root for a club that obviously the bottom part of the standings, but, you know, even a team that really is just striving to be a 500 type club. Of course, he's referring to Fernando Tatis Jr., son of Fernando Tatis Sr., the Major League Ball player who Andy Green has many memories playing with. And it should also be mentioned that Kevin Quackenbush, right-handed reliever, has been recalled from AAA El Paso and will be available in the bullpen tonight. Coming up, Colorado Rockies versus the Padres. Game two of the three-game set starts right now. Own a brewing company. Enjoy a longboard lager or big wave golden ale tonight. By Petco, your complete pet store. By Sony High Res Audio, finally hear everything. And by Jerome's Furniture, where Jerry's price is the lowest price every day. <laughs> Waving uh, to the fans here on a Saturday night. Baseball night in San Diego as Andrew Castor and the Padres take the field. And here's the lineup that Castor will face tonight, brought to you by Hyundai. Charlie Blackman leads it off with LeMahieu second. Nolan Arenado leading in home runs and RBIs in the National League third. And watch out, Carlos Gonzalez is back in the lineup. He's hit six home runs in the last eight games. Then it's Trevor Story, the 
Long ball hitting rookie at shortstop, Gerardo Parra in left, Mark Reynolds at first base, ex Padre Nick Hundley behind the plate for pitcher Chad Bettis. And Andrew Castro on the mound trying to better those numbers against these Rockies. His scouting report is brought to you by Anderson Plumbing, Heating, and Air. Well, we know that he's got the heat. He's got to be aggressive with all of his pitches, Andrew Castro doesn't. Put away the hitters. I know you can't control the foul balls, but if Andrew could quickly head 0 2, maybe 1 2, and then put them away, what do you think of that, Professor? Well, how about a swing and a miss? That'll bring the air into the package there as well. There you go. Huh? I got you. Nice. All right, Blackman hitting at 296 to start. And has been on base safely. 29 consecutive games were underway. The first pitch of the game is in there for a strike. Late umpire Jordan Baker, generous with his first call. It's a beautiful Saturday night, 70 degrees here in downtown San Diego. Right back to the plate, and it's strike two. Slider on the edge as well. Five for 16 is Blackman against Kastner in their previous meetings with a home run. And strike three called. Looked a bit inside, but Blackman takes the long walk, a three pitch strikeout. The Padres defense this evening brought to you by your San Diego County Ford dealers. Matt Kemp in right field with Jay patrolling center and Upton over and left. Brett Wallace gets the start at third with. Ramirez there at his side at shortstop. Solarte and Myers guarding the right side of the infield, and Derek Norris behind the mask, throwing out the signs for Andrew Kastner. DJ LeMahieu takes ball one. Baker calling the balls in strikes with Bassner, Everett, and Emil on the bases. Inside, 2 0. Oh. Kastner in his last seven starts is two and four for manager Andy Green. San Diego winning three of those games, dropping four. But his last eight, he's not allowed more than three earned runs. Just not getting a lot of so run support. Drew Pomerantz there in the middle next to Tyson Ross with a dandy last night, a two hit shutout through seven innings. And just what the doctor ordered for the Padres as they went on to win it four nothing. Only the second time the Rockies have been shut out all year. You know, there's nothing better than twirling a gym, but coming to the ballpark the next day, working your tail off, breaking a sweat, and then taking a shower, putting the uni on, sitting in the dugout and watching a big league ball game. That's what Drew Pomerantz is awarded with tonight. Yeah, he's on. The way right now would be the favorite to represent the Padres in the All-Star game. I never experienced that, but I hear it from a lot of guys. <laughs> Ground ball up the middle. There's Ramirez to his left to throw out LeMahieu. <laughs> Two away to Nolan Arenado. Let's check on our keys to the game brought to you by your San Diego Honda dealers. How about the Padres knocking out Bettis early? Why? Well, 13 earned runs his last two starts has not been throwing the ball well and collectively home and road an ERA over five. Keep Gonzalez quite a Petco. And why is that? This is his fruit li least. What's the weird right way? His uh, least fruitful venue in the NL West. Petco Park hitting only 250 in his previous yep. games here in San Diego. But he's on a hot streak. Arenado has had success against Kastner, 7 for 18, leading the National League with 17 homers and leading in RBIs with 44. But you know who's right behind him the way he's been hitting? Matt Kemp. Mm -hmm. Kemp is only three homers, home runs behind Arenado's league lead, and he's only six RBIs back of Arenado for the National League top production number. 2 0. 3 and 0 oh, too low. He's walked. More than any Rocky 22 times. Uh, four pitch walk. And the first base runner for the Rockies. Manager Walt Weiss tonight. Didn't give him much to hit there did he. No. Carlos Gonzalez didn't play last night. That might have been a favor for the Padres. Didn't start against the left-hander Pomerantz. 
Six home runs the last eight games, 11 on the season for Cargo. He and LeMahieu shared the top batting average for Walt Weiss, 306. You see that record there, 11 and 21 career record at Petco Park. So, you know, the thing's definitely leaning towards the Padres' way in game two after the shutout last night. Rockies have lost 12 of their last 16. Padres have won 20 of their last 26 home games against these Rockies, so hey, it's leaning towards Fryerville. Mm -hmm. Speaking of leaning, the defense leaning to the pull side with Solarte, the second baseman, out in shallow right field. Another miss at six straight out of the strike zone from Cashner. Looks like Andrew threw a change up there, one and zero oh, to go to two and zero. Oh. Hey, it's Bitmoji Day at the ball yard. Carlos Gonzalez is a piece of pizza with big feet. <laughs> Swing and a miss at a 93 mile an hour fastball. That's the one thing Andrew Kastner possesses. Good movement on the two seam fastball. Plus, he can locate. He can put it where he wants to. Seven out of ten times. Three and one. So he walks Arenado with two away and now falls behind Gonzalez three and one with Trevor Story, the rookie shortstop on deck. And Gonzalez will be pulling the trigger if he likes this one. Mm -hmm. And I'm betting it's going to be a two seamer away. Way outside. Back to back walks. Kastner working himself into a bit of trouble with his wildness in the first inning, and that'll bring up Trevor Story. So sometimes when a pitcher, I'm not saying this is the case for Andrew, but if, if you're trying to be too fine, it always leans the other way to where you miss big time on the outside part of the plate. And Story and Colorado, of course, that red hot April when he had 10 home runs, uh, all time. Record in the National League for a rookie in April to hit 10. He's cooled off somewhat since, but against the Padres, uh, 346 mark and three of those homers. That's in there. High fastball. Well, the word travels quickly. If you're a veteran, if you're a rookie, somebody's got to make an adjustment and then it reverts back the other way. Then the hitter's got to make the adjustment. He has struck out 77 times, most in the National League. Just off the edge. That is free and easy gas at 96. Darren Bolsley, the pitching guru, coach. Focusing on his big right hander. And it's two and one. It's a battle tonight of the Lone Star State talent. Andrew Kastner from Conroe, Texas, went to TCU, and his opponent Chad Bettis from Lubbock, Texas, stayed right at home to attend Texas Tech. A Red Raider and a Horn Frog. There right? you go. Chop toward short. Ramirez with a flip, and the inning comes to an end. Couple of walks, they don't hurt Kastner and the Padres. San Diego coming up.
Here's a runner to the plate. And that in a capsule was the story last night. Four to nothing with a three run homer. Matt Kemp tying the longest ever hit at Petco Park. And then uh, the daring steal of home by that man, Melvin Upton. <laughs> the news filtering out after the game about that steal. No one knew about it. But uh, Upton, ground ball by Jay. And he only ran a third of the way to first base as the first baseman, My uh, uh, Reynolds, uh, takes the play to the bag. Here's the Padre lineup brought to you by Toyota. Jay is out on one pitch. Myers coming up. Then it's Kemp and Solarte. Melvin Upton hits fifth. Brett Wallace in the starting lineup at third base will bat sixth. Then Derek Norris, Alexei Ramirez, and Kashner. Myers starts tonight at 270. Chad Bettis has pitched well against the Padres. His ERA is up there about five and a half, but against the Padres, a different story. He's 2 0 oh with a 1 8 2 earned run average against San Diego. Jumps ahead of Myers, two strikes. That is uh, unique in one regard. You don't see pitchers often working with short sleeves. Mm -hmm. Almost all of them use the long sleeve. He's Attired as a second baseman. He's got a pretty good frame too. Strong frame for a pitcher. 6-1 and a solid 200 pounds. Padres have been productive in the first inning. 13 runs in the last three games in the opening frame. Usually spells victory. Outside. Bettis was the second round pick of the Rockies six years ago out of Texas Tech. He's allowed opposing hitters to bat 276 against them this year. Four wins, four losses. Ground ball foul. Padres enjoying in the seven games a 5 2 advantage. And the Rockies in a slump of late. There are six wins and 20 losses in their last 26. So they're a frustrated lot coming into Petco for the series. It seems like that's been the template for these Colorado Rockies in years past. They start off a month, month and a half, maybe two months hot. And the next thing you know, start to slide a little bit. And when it's all said and done, you know what you're going to get out of that kid, Arenado. Walt Weiss is just hoping that his pitching staff can get an ERA under four and a half. Because yeah, this, be. this team's going to hit. It would be a major advancement. Two pitches uh, crowding Meyer, straightens them up on both, and now the count is full. Right now, the Rockies are in 271 as a club. That's second in the National League, but they're not getting hitters out with a 5.20 ERA. That ball is drilled to left center field, back to the wall, and touch them all. Will Myers circles the bases for the ninth time this year, and the Padres jump out to a one nothing lead. Tell you what, Will Myers taking the 3 2 fastball, getting the hands in, and sending this one a long way to left center field. Oh, let the big dog eat right there. Get on top of it, let that head fly. That's a big frame, that's a big boy. Getting all that momentum in motion. Killing that baseball. Breaking ball to Matt Kemp for strike one. Kemp belted one to the wall of the upper deck in left field last night. Tying Adrian Gonzalez, longest ever home run here at Petco Park at 458 feet. And you know, I don't think it was a mistake by Bettis throwing Kemp a first pitch curveball this at bat. Last night, first pitch fastball home run. That one kicks foul. They measure Myers home run at 399 feet. 
estimated. It's got to be a good feeling. First mm -hmm. bat of the night going yard. The ball two strikes to Kemp. Did he go. Yes he did and knew it. First strike out for Bettis. Let's check the Colorado defensive alignment with the cargo out there in right field. In center is Blackman, Parra over and left. Arenado and Story on the left side. LeMahieu and Reynolds at second and first. Nick Hundley behind the plate for Chad Bettis. Solarte, the Padres' leading batting average at 323. And in the last 10 games, he's hit a solid 378. All three of his season home runs coming in the last 10. Two balls and a strike. He's had better success this year hitting right handed limited number of bats he's hitting 400 right handed 8 for 20 batting 286 from the left side. Good cut there. Last year was just the reverse he had more success left hand. Overall 323. Pulled foul. You know, we've seen Solarte from the left side crush the low ball. From the right side, a pitch is up around the belt buckle and higher getting on top and hitting home runs. So covering that strike zone very nicely from both sides of the plate. Toughest Padre to strike out last year. But he goes down swinging tonight as Bettis a couple of strikeouts, but Will Myers gives the Padres an early lead with a 399 foot shot to left center field and it's one nothing San Diego. It's a business, man. Um, I don't, I don't know uh, what, what, what was, what was brought of it, but I mean, it is what it is. We got to go on. It's a, it's a great pitcher. It's a friend of mine. Um, he's gonna do good over there in Chicago, and I wish him the best of luck. Yeah, it has nothing to do with it. Um, I'm sure there's a, there's a lot of guys on this team that are disappointed he's gone right now, and uh, it's just an unfortunate situation. But unfortunately, it's, a, it's the game of baseball. Matt Kemp and Melvin Upton Jr. on the trading of James Shields to the Chicago White Sox. And he certainly leaves open a void as far as a veteran presence in the clubhouse. And Mark Grant, how important is having that veteran presence when it comes to being a starter? It's very important. It has that filter down effect, the domino effect for pitchers, for position players alike. There's one thing I did want to say regarding the comments 
because I've been in a situation on both sides. This is the business we've signed up for. It goes along with the territory. And when it's all said and done, you've got to worry about yourself and your teammates that are intact as we speak. We wish James well. What happened happened. It's out of the control of the players. But you know what? That's the game of baseball. I mean, it's. How many times were you traded? Twice. Three times. I, I take that back. Three times. It so never feels good, does it? No. You get settled in. You meet new teammates. Yeah. You become you friends. You commit to them. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a fraternity. Then you go on your way and. It is an adjustment. It's a big time adjustment. 2-1 to Para. He fouls it back. No, I, I'm sad every time I hear somebody that has been traded away. I mean, even as announcers, we get to know the players. We, we try to do a fair job in describing their activity on the field and mm -hmm. want them to do well. We, we're, we're in our heart cheering for them. Right. And, and, and we have to remember one other thing. The window is so small for a professional baseball player. The bottom line is winning. You want to be on a winner. You want to go to a World Series. You want to be a champion. And from James Shields standpoint if he's thrown in the trade to Chicago guess what the White Sox need him. He's he what did he jump 10 or 12 games in the standings. Yeah, the White Sox are currently only a game and a half behind Kansas City in the AL Central and they've been in a slump. They've lost eight of their last 10. So they're a contender at this point that's for certain. So that's the bottom line. Winning. Para bounces that to Myers. A nice pickup with a backhand. One away. Back to you, Julie. Well, guys, to continue the conversation about having that veteran presence and just how important it really is and what it means to the clubhouse, Andy Green tells me he's looking to Drew Pomerantz to pick up the slack there. And he said, you know, he's been doing so well this year that he's really hoping that he steps into that role. And he's really looking to him for guys to lean on for some advice, for support, especially during this time. And that's a tough uh, challenge for a pitcher. He's not an everyday player. I mean, ideally, you have somebody who's out yeah. there every day and uh, a leader of the team on the field and back in the clubhouse. But Pomerantz uh, has those qualities, leadership qualities. You know what? That, that's a good point because you get 10 people in a room, you get 12 different opinions on who should be a leader. It's very tough to be a leader, but being a teammate of Rich Gossage, that guy was a leader and he was a pitcher. Position players, yeah. Derek Jeter's of the world, the captains, the guy, Gary Templeton, he was our captain, he was our leader. And, and it's something you can't. I believe it's something you can't put on a guy. It's got to be organic and it's got to happen through osmosis and it's got to work in the clubhouse between mm -hmm. the guys. That's just my feeling. Because if you appoint somebody, I mean, you suggest you can suggest as a manager, as a coach, that this guy has the capabilities of doing that. Looper over the head of Myers toward the right field corner. Kemp is going to hustle it to second base, but. Into second goes Mark Reynolds. He didn't hit it hard, but able to get it over the first baseman's head for a one out double. So Shields goes to the White Sox. The Padres got two players in return. Former University of California pitching star Eric Johnson. He has only two starts with the White Sox, was pitching very well down at Triple A. And also a 17 year old Fernando Tatis Jr. You remember his dad 11 years in the major leagues. Very high on the potential of this young man who's yet to play a professional game. Ground ball right side and through off the bat of Hundley. And here comes Reynolds and here comes the throw. No they check Reynolds at third and wisely so. Kemp with a strike up the line but it would have been right into Reynolds had he tried to score. Well, a lot going on there because third base coach Stu Cole, he wanted to get a read on this single to right field from Nick Hundley. So, with that said, Mark Reynolds on second base, he doesn't have blazing speed. Stu Cole was literally more than halfway down the line, and Reynolds is watching him, and then, okay, I got the stop sign, now I'm going to put on the brakes and get back to third base. Well, those were the emergency brakes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So first and third respect of Matt Kemp's arm and that brings you up to the pitcher and now the Padres have to be alert for a possible squeeze he's one for 18 and there is the bunt foul. Myers reacting quickly.
First and third, one away. Padres lead one nothing. That lead challenged here by the Rockies in the second. Bunt said high in the air. Sacrifice fly. <laughs> it goes back to the screen. No chance on that one, but Derek Norris lost that one. He had no idea where that ball was. Kind of threw his hands up in the air when that ball was bunted, but nobody was going to get that one off the screen. So that's not a squeeze. He's just trying to move the runner yeah. from first to second. And leave it up to Charlie Blackman to maybe get <laughs> two runs on a single. Oh, that's a horrifying moment for any ball player not to know where the ball is. Two strike pitch, bunted again in the air and caught by Myers. That was a self defense bunt. So two outs, runners at first and third for leadoff man Blackman. You know, on a play like that, I'm sure there are some fans or people watching that say, hey, let that ball drop and maybe you can turn two. You know what? I disagree. Why? I, I think in a situation like this, you don't want to get cute. Now you've got for sure two outs. Sure, you've got runners at the corners, but if you purposely let that ball drop, you try to turn two. Bettis was still in the box. You could have doubled him up, but hey, an errant throw means a run. Got to come out with a two out knock. So I like the idea of just getting the secure out. Blackman took a third strike to open the ball game. Ooh. Good pitch. That's a good pitch, Andrew. Good slider. 25 runs batted in for Blackman. That's a good total for a leadoff man. Six home runs. One of those off Cashner. A bit mochi night, and uh, hey, the struggle is real for Charlie Blackman. And Kastner falls behind 2 0. Oh. So, with the trade of James Shields, he was scheduled to be the starting pitcher tomorrow, so it's going to be a very interesting day this Sunday. John Gray will be on the mound for the Rockies, but Andy Green, it's going to be a bullpen day. He's going to have to. Patchwork the pitching staff and try to get three, four men to do the job. Charlie Holt staff tomorrow, right? Yeah, everybody on your toes. Three and O. Oh with LeMahieu next. I'm guessing three and O. Oh he's swinging. Oh, no question. If it's right there, you bet. He gets the strike call, Kastner. So that's the kind of pitch on three and all. You're anything down there, you're just not going to pull. Yep. The trigger on it. Now three and one. Reynolds at third, Hundley at first. Line to right center, and that's up the alley, all the way to the wall. And with two outs running all the way is Hundley. He's around third, being waved home. He scores on a two run double from Blackman and the Rockies take the lead two to one. Yeah, Tashner falls behind and had to come in with something sweet to hit and Blackman punishes this one. Yeah and he yanks this ball just a little bit bring it over the heart of the plate and low Charlie Blackman likes that low pitch. And it's a hitter three one. Yeah you're comfortable you see the fastball. And he splits the gap. And that'll bring up LeMahieu, grounded to short his first time. For Blackman is 26th and 27th. Runs batted in of the year. LeMahieu has had good success against the Padres in his career. Well over 300. Checks his swing and didn't go. After power grounded out, Reynolds doubled over Myers' head into right. Hundley single to right, first and third, two outs, and Blackman brings them both home with that double to right center. 
And Blackman now out at second base. That makes 30 consecutive games. He's reached base safely. Now that's what you would say the makeup of a good leadoff man. Absolutely. Going to be a board for the rest of the guys. Chop to Ramirez on the run. You better hurry and gets him by half stride. But the Rockies two runs on three hits and take the lead two to one. of the trade. Oh, that's a good one, Professor. How about in the fourth inning last night, Melvin Upton Jr., hey, this was all on him. This was his decision. Glenn Hoffman, the third base coach, didn't even realize he was going to do it. As soon as Russin started that delivery, he was off and running. Now he's got to maneuver his body in a way to avoid the attack from Nick Hundley. He plants his hand, works around him a little bit, and then slaps home plate safely. A straight steal of home. If you were here last night or if you watched it, it's one of the most exciting things to see at the ball yard. You bet. The daring and the execution of Upton and that acrobatic slide mm -hmm. to finish it off. 247 is average as we start tonight. Most steals of home, you go back to turn of the century, Ty Cobb and Max Carey, and George Burns, and Honus Wagner. It was common in those days, in part because the catcher didn't always sit up just right behind the hitter he might step right. be back 10 feet right. catching the ball in one hop. Isn't that back when the catcher stood straight up. He didn't even yeah. get in the crouch. <laughs> two and two. Well, that's a pretty good bit emoji of Melvin Upton Junior. He was a big key last night in the victory. Breaking ball outside for the full count. Upton, Wallace, and Norris for the Padres here in the home half of the second. Half a dozen home runs for Junior. Ground ball up the middle, hit hard. LeMayhew able to lean out and backhand it and throw him out. Good play by the second baseman. That ball was hit hard. Brett Wallace getting the start tonight at third base. Pinch hitter deluxe. He's three for six as a pinch hitter. Not quite as successful as a starter. And he had 217 overall. Well, the last five starts for Chad Bettis. One and three, Professor, with a seven and a half ERA. Hmm. And the last two starts giving up 13 earned runs. Yeah. Always take advantage tonight. We'll see. He beat the Padres back in April. Remember, in the second week of the season, yes, six to three, and allowed only one earned run, seven mm -hmm. hits in seven innings.
2 and 0. Oh. Three balls, no strikes. Try to jam. Yeah. Shift on. Strike. Well, the scouting report for Chad Bettis. This kid, uh, he's got the good frame for a pitcher. Strong. Throws pretty much everything. He'll cut the fastball, throw that slider down and in, and he's got that bulldog mentality. And you can tell by the way he throws and the way he presents himself on the mound. Broken bat, looper to center. That's going to fall for a base hit. Padres second hit. Myers with the home run the other. Tying run on with one out. Well, when you're a big, strong kid like Brett Wallace from the left side, and you get a pitch, you know, you hit it off the end of the bat, you hit it down by the label, you will gladly sacrifice that shillelagh for a base knock. You can give it that little oomph over the infielders and dump it in front of the outfielders. It's that little extra oomph because you're strong. Oomph is a good thing. It is a good thing once in a while. Pitchers have oomph, you know. Absolutely. Nolan Ryan had a lot of oomph. Oh, you could hear him. Mm. He'd be throwing 150 pitches in a game in the ninth inning, and you could hear him all the way into the press box. Yeah. Derek Norris. He's creeping up on that 200 mark. Hitting 310 in the last nine games. Get his bat going. That'll be a terrific uh, addition to this Padre offense. Bettis getting a call right there on that first pitch. Cute foul. Well, before the game tonight, uh, the big scoreboard recognizing the life of Muhammad Ali in a moment of silence. Quite in contrast to what the scoreboard is showing now. That was a nice tribute. All of the newspapers, radio, television. It's uh, been a full day of deserve a tribute to the champ, and reminded me of one of he was he was so charismatic. He was audacious, certainly, great talent, and by his own judgment, pretty. He said, "I'm pretty." <laughs> I remember that. No, no one argued. Outside, that was a pretty good pitch. But my favorite quote from Ali was, "I never want to look down." On those who look out to me. Great quote. Isn't that a great quote? Absolutely. We certainly uh, transcended sport. Uh, maybe his greatest contribution was out of the ring. That ball driven deep to left on a line and gone. Derek Norris, a two run shot, touch them all. Number six for the Padre catcher, and they claim the lead three to two. It was a two two offering from Chad Bettis, and it was a breaky ball. Talk about speeding up the bat. Look at that. It's a curveball. Oh, it's a hangy. And you know, when you hangy, he will bangy. And Norasaurus Rex takes it out of Jurassic Park. So the Padres a couple of home runs off Bettis and here's Ramirez ground ball to the gold glove at third Arenado across for the second out. Well Bettis has thrown some long balls so far this year. It's his 12th start. He's now given up 11 home runs. Now that is crushing a mistake. Bettis wanted to bury that breaking ball with two strikes but not the case. And as a hitter you got to be short and quick to that mistake. And Derek Norris said it. On its way. 367 the measurement. And the bunt try by Kashner. And they throw him out. Bettis makes the play, and you almost have to hold your breath with Kashner running it out. That put him on the DL with uh, cramped legs. Uh, no cramp in that swing of Norris. He sends a laser line drive home run, and the Padres lead.
Your owner was very, very critical of, of James Shields. Was there any added, I'm not sure, incentive pressure to go ahead and, and trade Shields as soon as possible? No, I mean, honestly, I think it was a, uh, it was a, you know, this was something like I mentioned that was more like the last, you know, week to 10 days in the making. And, you know, honestly, like I think the, uh, you know, the, 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 you know, the comments, you know, stemming from, from the game the other day in Seattle, you know, it didn't really factor into, into my calculus and, and into the decision. So general manager A.J. Preller commenting on the trade today is Scott Miller, the Padres MLB insider. Um, what did you think about that? Do you think that uh, the tirade uh, or the outspoken owner, Ron Fowler, he zeroed in on Shields after his performance in Seattle? Uh, do you think it had anything to do with today's deal? Yeah, you know, Dick, I, I don't. I mean, I think Ron Fowler was obviously completely frustrated, uh, as a lot of people around the Padres are. But my sources say that the Padres and White Sox have been talking about a deal. For Before the, that game. Yeah, the last 10 days or so. And, and other teams, three or four other teams came to the Padres as well once they heard about the White Sox and said, hey, are you shopping James Shields? And, you know, I think, you know, basically what, what Ron Fowler's, uh, uh, you know, outspokenness did really was kind of telegraph the deal to Padres fans that it put them on high alert that this is mm -hmm. going to happen, but it, it wasn't a cause and effect. Do you like the trade? I, I do because, you know, I mean, in a perfect world, they'd get better talent back. They wouldn't have to eat as much money. Uh, you know, White Sox are picking up $27 million, I'm told. That's uh, more than you make, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, they told me when I showed up here with you, Dick, maybe I'd get well, more. <laughs> we got an autograph ball from Mark Grant we're going to give you. <laughs> you know, I like the deal as well, but, Scott, the one thing from a baseball logistics standpoint as far as James Shields, throughout the course of his career, he's been a pitcher that has eaten up innings. Yes. Now, as soon as this deal is done, I'm thinking to myself, since 2012 13, you know, he's been one of the most active pitchers as far as innings pitched. Who's going to pick up the bulk of the innings pitch that James Shields once chewed up? That, that's the big, big question. And that's a question that, that, that A.J. Preller and Andy Green are going to have to deal with throughout, um, especially in the short term here. Because as you said, James Shields, 200 plus innings, nine years in a row. And as we know, Tyson Ross has been out all year. Um, you know, the Padres have had, you know, Cesar Vargas showed a little bit of promise and he's out. Even when you think about it, the season started with uh, Tyson Ross number one and uh, Shields two and Erland had worked his way to the five spot and they're all gone. Right, exactly. So, you know, Andy Green said today, I mean, for example, Shields was supposed to start tomorrow. Eric Johnson, the right hander they acquired from the White Sox, he'll plug into the role eventually. But he just started in AAA on Thursday night. So he won't pitch. He won't start here before Tuesday. So tomorrow we know is going to be a bullpen day. That's why, you know, it's important tonight, Cashner, give him some innings because we know that Andy Green and Darren Balsley are going to have to mm -hmm. chew through that bullpen to piece tomorrow's game together. So from that perspective, um, you know, Andy Green talked about short term, probably the probability of having to go with an eight man bullpen mm -hmm. uh, in the near term and then see how that shakes out. And then hopefully Eric Johnson gets here and helps to pick up some innings and the next off days until Thursday next week. So that's a consideration. You've got all those games to fill all those innings to fill. So you're talking about the uh, the extra arm in the bullpen. What do you got on Eric Johnson? What can you tell us about him? You know, he he was a one time hot prospect in the White Sox system and going into the 2014 season Baseball America had him as the number two prospect in the White Sox system he started the 2014 season in the White Sox rotation he was in their opening day rotation uh, when the 2014 season started he didn't stick in 2014 and 15 he was kind of bounced up and down as you can see there a big boy, yeah. six three, two thirty, yeah, six three, two thirty from uh, Cal. He was the White Sox second round pick out of Cal in uh, twenty thirteen, and uh, but slider, slider, fastball guy um, had trouble consistently commanding the fastball. Uh, Southern California kid, Los Altos High School, and uh, Fernando Tatis, uh, only seventeen. He hasn't played a professional game yet. Yes, and uh, of course we know his his father, Fernando Tatis, former power hitting infielder for the Texas Rangers um, Padres like him they got the, they acquired the Guerra kid 
uh, from the Boston Red Sox and the Craig Kimbrell deal to play is a mm -hmm. potential shortstop of the future. Fernando Tatis now goes into that mix as well. He yeah. could be a shortstop. Well, Guerra is kind of struggling right now, is he not, in the minor leagues? He is. I just He's talked. Striking out a lot. Yes, a lot. And, and Mud, I just talked to a scout that saw him play last week that said, yeah, he said, look, he's a good player, but for whatever reason, whether it's changing scenery, whether it's getting adjusted to the new teammates, to the new locale of playing, right. wherever it is, he's really struggling. So Still very young. He is. very. Yeah, that's the thing. And Tatis as well, 17 years old. Um, the hope, I, I think, guys, is, is when A.J. Preller was in Texas, he mm -hmm. was obviously heavily involved in bringing some of the young Latin players right. into their system. Uh, Rugned, Odor, Jerkson, Profar, a couple of those guys. And they hit the major leagues at 19 or 20. So part of the Padres thinking, I believe, is hoping they catch lightning in a bottle with Tatis, a, a, a good prospect but very young and that maybe by the time he's 20, I think in a perfect world, mm -hmm. maybe by 19 or 20, mm -hmm. he'd hit the majors, but that's asking a lot. Yeah. The, uh, so the considerations really in the trade one is uh, that of cash, and obviously a very large amount of money is going to be saved by the Padre organization. They get a right-handed pitcher who just, he's been on the cusp of becoming yep. a big league pitcher. He's one of the top, well, he was the International League Pitcher of the Year last year. Mm -hmm. So he's got some talent, and then this, uh, Young kid Tatis, and who knows how good he might be as Gonzalez walks after Arenado struck out to open this third inning. Third walk from Kashner. Well, is this just the start of uh, more swapping? I think from everything uh, I hear, Dick, and from what talking to scouts and executives around the league, the, they feel that, that sure, the Padres are, are, so to speak, open for business now. And... Um, Shields that was the first shot and, and given the way especially the last two weeks have gone. Mm -hmm. I think that's they've they really decided um, they have to expedite get the process of getting young talent into the organization. So Matt Kemp perhaps yeah. next. I think anybody with a big contract right now Kemp Melvin Upton Jr. Even Derek Norris. I think Norris will be one to watch when whenever Austin Hedges mm -hmm. comes back from the broken hammock bone. Uh, but there's no question that, that you, you talk with, with representatives from other teams and they say, yes, the Padres are, are, are talking to them and, and gauging what the market is. Did he get him? No. That was Brett Wallace playing in an unfamiliar position, ranging in front of the shortstop Ramirez, and then a backhanded throw, and they don't get Gonzalez. So an infield hit is uh, credited to Trevor Story. So two on with one out. Well, very awkward play for Brett Wallace. You know, his momentum is going towards second base. So that is essentially his ball. But not finding the handle slash not getting a good grip rather than the flip throw from the ear. Yeah, you could see it kind of bobbled a little bit. And then he went with the emergency backhand. <laughs> and Solarte the... didn't have his foot right. on the back. So safe. And an infield hit credit to Story. Well, these are the kind of innings that have tormented Andrew Kastner all season long. He strikes out the leadoff man, walks Gonzalez, and now should have been an out. Story safe on an infield hit. And the batter is Gerardo Parra, grounded to first his first time. So, Scott, what we've witnessed today, first with James Shields and possibly more moves, and with the younger talent the Padres are getting, we've got the draft coming up as well. It looks like that blueprint is starting to be like okay we need to refurbish we need to reload up in the minor leagues with that young talent yeah I think there's no is question. that what you see no question um, you know I think we saw that in the Craig Kimbrell deal with Boston last November for four prospects mm -hmm. um, you know and you hear a lot about about uh, the center fielder and the shortstop that they were yeah, Margo's Boston. hitting over 300 now he, he, at yep. AAA. Yeah exactly Dick and and I think that's where the Padres are focusing on things right now. Um, one other thing where the White Sox are concerned I don't know. I don't know that just because the Shields deal was pulled today I wouldn't expect necessarily OK an unloading in the next week you know boom 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 I, I mean they found a deal they liked with Shields and you know I would expect the rest of it to be more you know closer mm -hmm. to the July trade deadline the, the thing that I think pushed the, the boat with Shields is the White Sox they started 23 and 10 
and they they made some moves over the winter. They got Todd Frazier, Alex Avila, Austin Jackson. Ground ball, and there's the throw to second back to first base, and double play. Great play by the middle infield. How about Salarte ranging and firing an off-balance strike to Ramirez, and he completes the four, six, three, double play. Oh, my. Well, the Padres maintain their lead, middle of the third. Stay with us, will you, Scott? Sure, Dick. by Will Myers his ninth and a two run home run from Derek Norris Norris is sixth of the season lead the Rockies tonight 3 2 as San Diego comes up in the bottom of the third Scott Miller kind enough to stay with us a bit more so um, recapping what has happened today and looking ahead in your crystal ball uh, they don't like to use the word rebuilding around here uh, but it's language they're building and not rebuilding I, I don't quite uh, know how to discern the difference but it's obvious there's going to be changes made. There, I, there's no question. That's, that's to me, Dick, the biggest takeaway from pulling the trigger on a James Shields deal so early this season. And as I started to say before the break, you, know, you make deals that make sense to you when the timing is right. And, and clearly the Padres have decided it's time to move things mm -hmm. along. Secondly, though, they found a trade partner in the White Sox in which the timing was right. The White Sox were very eager to make the deal. Over the winter, they really retooled the clubhouse. They brought in talent, but also I talked to their general manager, Rick Hahn, for quite a while this spring. They wanted to change their clubhouse culture. So talent-wise and, and changing that, they brought in Todd Frazier, who's really hit well, an mm -hmm. all-star. Mm -hmm. Austin Jackson, Alex Avila, Jimmy Rollins. So they tr changed things around. Then they started this year 23 and 10. Matt Latos, it was a yes. like six and one. Yes, yes, <laughs> and 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 they he, Latos gave them some good starts early. They started 23 and 10. They were thrilled, and they decided right then and there we can win this year. Then after the 23 and 10 start, Jay rifles a single to right field to open the Padre third. After that 23 and 10 start. They've gone six and 17 since then. Now they were first place so far this season, 47 days. But in the six and 17 skid, they dropped out, and they're in third place now in the American League Central, behind Kansas City and the Indians. But, but they're, they're only a game and a half out. Ex right? Exactly. Thus, their move. Now two. Yeah. Two. Okay, two. But as you can see. And, and that's after being in first place for 47 days this season. So the White Sox think they can win. They want to nip this skid they're in right now in the bud very quickly. So they went looking and they saw, hey, we can get James Shields. So there was urgency on both sides. And, and for a team like the White Sox in this position in the season, it is early for them because every team's going to have their skid. So yeah. if they can 
fill that gap, that hole with a guy like Shields. And who knows, with a little bit of support, we all know that James Shields can get a lot of support here. Right? right. Yeah, no run support at all. Right. You know, you go to Chicago, they start swinging the sticks a little bit, and he's getting four or five runs to start. Who knows what's going to happen? Yeah, in fact, that's a very interesting point, Mud, because they're going to hit some home runs. It, it, the White Sox had Todd Frazier alone, let alone, you know, Jose Abreu and, and, and the rest of the guys in the lineup, Melky Cabrera, who just went on the DL. But the other thing, that ballpark is can be a jet stream mm -hmm. in the summertime. Conversely, it'll be interesting to see how James Shields does there because last year he gave up the most homers in the majors. Myers, who homered deep to left center his first time up, he sends a laser single to left field, and the Padres have the first two men on here in the third inning. Well, big and strong. We know that Will Myers can attack that ball the opposite way, but look at him adjust here, going down and getting it. The two-seam fastball. Oh, he gets that big frame going. The ball jumps off his bat. That ball hit one hopper to Para out in left field. So Scott Miller will let you go with uh, reversing the, the whole uh, direction of our conversation about the positive thus far. Two months into the season for the Padres, what do you see as the biggest positive? Well, you know, certainly some of the, uh, the young pitching, we saw Cesar Vargas showed some promise before he got hurt. Um, I think Andy Green and, the, and, and, and with Mark McGuire's bench coach, they're settling in. Um, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, certainly Will Myers has been a big plus if he can stay healthy. And, of course, Drew Pomerantz. How about his development yes. this year? The, the acquisition of Drew Pomerantz has uh, really been, he's been fun to watch. Into the left field through the 6.5 hole. Here comes Jay to the plate. The throw to third base. They get the out at third. Myers trying to go from first to third. As Jay comes in to score and the Padres lead 4-2. to two. But you can't take uh, too many luxuries on these corner outfielders. Uh, Gonzalez in left and Parr in right. They both can, can throw the apple. And you know what the key is here? After it gets by Arenado, okay, he's probably not going to get the guy at the plate. Hit the cutoff man. Hit the cutoff man in the chest. They give it up the pill, and very, very close. Doesn't look like the Padres are going to challenge as, yeah. Oh, you know what? After a second look, well, they can't do anything about it now. Yeah, Solardi quickly steps into the batter's box, so give uh, Kemp his 39th RBI of the season. He's only five off the league lead. Well, thanks again, Scott. Keep us uh, in mind whenever you got those <laughs> those uh, hot stories. Uh, great job, and uh, it does make life fun, doesn't it, this time of the it, year? It does. Yeah. I mean, however it goes, yeah. uh, trade whatever side of the trades you're on. Once those trade talks start, it, it's interesting. Yeah. So Scotty, thanks. We'll talk soon. You Thank you, guys. All right. Nice tie. Thanks, Flip Scott. On? Flip on tie? <laughs> ah, real, real. <laughs> Watch out, he's just starting be, to get on. Are you going to be joining the guys on the postgame show? Uh, not today, okay. just pregame today. Great. Okay. Thanks, Scotty. Thanks, guys. Right. Scott Miller, MLB, and insider. Last four games, Solarte had a 429 clip. Struck out his first time. 756 on the put out of Myers for the first out here in the third. Padres get a run, 4 to 2. Yeah, in the dirt. And Padres uh, with a run in each of the first three innings. The solo homer by Myers in the first, the two run shot by Norris in the second, and now three singles consecutively, Jay, Myers, and Kemp to make it four to two. Shift on with Solardi. All kinds of room over in that third base side. Arenado's playing close to second, but he hits it right into the shift, and that'll be four, six, Three, a double play. But the Padres add on, and after three at Petco, it's a 4 2 lead.
Now for great moments in all-star history, brought to you by GEICO. Coors Field in Denver, the host for the 1998 All-Star festivities. And it was a scoring fest, the All-Star game's highest scoring game in history as the American League prevailed 13 to eight. After three here at Petco tonight, the Padres four runs on six hits, no errors, as there's the magic number, the 19 worn oh, by yeah. Tony Gwynn. Two runs, four hits, no errors for Colorado. Charlie Blackman's two run double accounting for their two scores. High fly ball, deep center field off the back of Mark Reynolds. He's got power. Can Jay get there? No. Over the center field wall for a home run. Reynolds third of the season. It was so high, one hoped that it wouldn't clear the boards, but he had plenty behind it. Well, like Matt Kemp last night, Mark Reynolds swinging at the first pitch. So a double and a home run for Reynolds in his two at bats. And Reynolds going El Centro. Straight away center field. He had a lot of swings and misses in that. Mark Reynolds, but also a lot of long balls as well. And John Jay doing everything he can, but just too far for the Padres center fielder. So that cuts the lead to 4 3. And here's Nick Hundley. He singled to right field and scored his first time up. For Reynolds, his 241st career homer. You know, we were talking about trades earlier, and Nick Hundley now at the plate. He was a homegrown Padre, right? And then he was traded. Majority of the guys in this game of baseball experience that. I particularly had a, a great experience. And he drives that to left center field, and there's no one there. Around first to second, Hundley, and he'll settle for a stand up double. Home run double here in the fourth inning off Andrew Kastner. Well, this month's community partner is Inspire San Diego. Visit FoxSportsSanDiego.com for more information. So at the bottom of the order, Reynolds a home run and a double, and Nick Hundley a single and a double. That brings up the pitcher Bettis. Be putting this guy over. Play at third. There's a throw, and they've got him. Nice. No hesitation by Myers. And that erases the lead runner. Dick, that's the key. What you said, no hesitation at all. Get that baseball, put it in your mind, and you can somewhat see the play in front of you because you're rushing there in your peripheral vision. Yeah, you can see that Brett Wallace is going to be there. Tag is made. Hundley didn't have a chance. No. Frustrating moment for the former Padre. So safe on the fielder's choice is Bettis into the top of the order. Charlie Blackman doubled to right center and knocked in two back in the second. But anyway, getting back to the trading, you know, a lot to be said about the team you go to and the guys who welcome you with open arms. I remember I was traded from the Padres to the Braves in 1990. And when teammates accept you right from the get go, it really pays off. I remember walking into that clubhouse in Atlanta, seeing my jersey hanging in the mm -hmm. locker. The first guy that approached me was Pete Smith pitcher for the Braves the second guy who approached me was Tom Glavin and from that day forward we went out after that game got to know a little bit but we're all in this business knowing that that can happen and you know how you're accepted is a big part of the deal as well making you feel at home with your new ball club well that's what they're talking about the the character of the clubhouse and how important that is yeah. and it's a team they lose the player they welcome you mm -hmm. and right away you want to win for them I mean it's not like they stick you over in the corner will anyone uh, introduce themselves mm -hmm. to me am I Am I sick or something? No one likes me. Hey, and if you're a baseball fan, you're out there, you know, you, you read the Internet, and, and there's so much information out there. And there are guys out there who are labeled bad clubhouse guys. It's just part of the game. It happens in football. It happens in basketball. It happens in every sport. It's just inevitable when all these bodies are in one collective area. Once in a while, there's going to be a guy who's not a good clubhouse guy. You know, George Allen, the Hall of Fame football coach, and he was the Rams coach when I was their announcer way back. 
They used to say that every team has players good enough to make you lose. Mm. The idea is to have as few of those as you can. Right. Uh, but everyone has them. Yeah. It's hard to have a baseball 25 for 25 as Blackman lines one and Upton has to fade back to make the catch. Two away. Well, a highlight of every Padre telecast, the Cholula flamethrower. And with the uh, Conroe Comet on the hill from Texas, the right-hander Texas, 96. What is that? That's hot sauce. Hot sauce. <laughs> You'll never catch Mark Sweeney, though. You're trying. I mean, uh, you're almost there. He's the best at it. Yeah, he's, that's, his, that's his number. Whatever happened to Mark Sweeney? Isn't he coming up? Oh, because of uh, Scott Miller. He didn't come up and see us tonight. I huh? think he's calling off the jam tonight. Oh, oh he'll he, be in the fifth. Oh, that's that's good. Hey, cut down that hug and stuff, though, huh? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can do that. I'm adjust. You know, I, I can adjust. The great ones adjust, so no hugging. LeMayhew fouls it back. He's grounded twice to Ramirez at short. Seventy seven pitches and somehow or another it just that pitch count when Castor's on the hill just seems to climb in double time. By the way Pete Smith I mentioned he was also a Padre for a brief time. You talk about good clubhouse guys Pete Smith one of the best. <laughs> just funny and low key dry sense of humor. Gamer gave it his all on the hill battled injuries. Try to come back. There's a lot of good ones out there, Dick. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's 98.75. No, you know, 99.75 of the guys are, are great guys. Inside, not that much. One and two to LeMayhew. Two outs, a run home here in the fourth on Mark Reynolds' home run. Ground ball again to short. Oh. And Ramirez can't make the play. Backed up on it. The ball played him. That's something that Ramirez uh, rarely commits himself to do. And that'll be an error. Yeah, you just don't see that from Alexei. He backs up. And you know what? I'm surprised that Ramirez didn't charge that ball and try to get it on the hop or even the short hop. The short hop is the one that's easy to get to because it's just right out in front of your glove and you pick it. When you start to back up on your heels a little bit, that's when the ball starts to eat you up a little bit. So an extra out for the Rockies here in the fourth, and that brings up the big boys, Arenado and Gonzalez, their top home run hitters. And a big swing and a miss by Arenado, who struck out last time. Well, a look at the Major League home run leaders. Mark Trumbo finding a home in Baltimore. Leads the way with Frazier with the White Sox and Arenado 17, Cano with 16, and David Ortiz with 16. Matt Camp 14. Reynolds started this inning with a home run. Hundley with a double to left center. Then the big bunt play, and uh, Myers able to get Hundley at third base. Bettis safe on the fielder's choice. Line out by Blackman and LeMayhew. Safe on the air by the shortstop Ramirez to extend the inning. Slicing down into the right field corner and foul. Two and two to Arenado. I think this was one of the things I talked about in Andrew Scott reported with two strikes trying to put him away, but Arenado hanging tough. He has really cut down his strikeout total this year. So the punch out in the third. More than just an ordinary victory for Kashner. Two and two now. Popped him up. Myers wants it. And that'll do it for the Colorado fourth inning. They get a home run from Reynolds. And after three and a half, the Padres by one.
saw him out of the corner of my eye, started running, and I thought he was just kind of hard break. You know, he just kind of faked the pitcher out or something. Then he started screaming at me. I don't know if you guys could hear that on TV, but he was screaming like, ah! So I just was kind of like, just took a step back and let him do his thing. Uh, Drew said he saw me kind of out of the corner of his eye. He thought I was fake breaking, but he said once he heard me yelling, he knew I was coming, so it worked out. He says that's what they do. They yell at you so you don't swing at it and kill them or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I told him I'm glad he screamed because I probably would have swung at it and wouldn't have been very good. <laughs> well, that's pitcher Drew Pomerantz last night on his at bat when all of a sudden Melvin Upton Jr. comes out of absolutely nowhere to steal home. I don't know about you guys, but I could watch a replay of that steal of home any day. Oh, there's a fancy play by the shortstop uh, Trevor Story to by Upton. That's two good plays made against him tonight. Now here is the steal, and about halfway there, he was yelling at Pomerantz, don't swing, here I come. And he would have been only, what, 12 feet away from Pomerantz had Pomerantz taken a cut. That was a terrific slide. You know, I, I've never stole home base, I've never stolen a base, but I tell you what, from Melvin Upton Jr.'s vantage point, when he, at that moment when you commit, it's almost, and I've never bungee jumped, but it's almost like that point of no return where you start to jump, right? And you know, it's now or never. But that one instant to where he commits, he's gonna have that feeling in his belly, those butterflies that I gotta go, and I gotta be quick, because it's gonna be close. But that was exciting to watch. Very exciting. A real highlight in the four nothing win last night. It's not the first time he's stolen home. He's had a couple other times in his past. He was able to pilfer that final pentagon. Wallace a looping single his first time and scored on the two run homer Derek Norris. Yeah, Melvin Upton hitting in tough luck tonight hit the ball hard twice. And LeMayhew makes a good play and now shortstop story. Pretty good uh, defensive left side of the infield for mm -hmm. Colorado. Shift on story over on the second base side. Breaking ball and it's two and two. Yeah, there's some gold in them Bar Hills on that infield. Arenado, LeMayhew. Gonzalez has won the gold yep. glove in the outfield. And so is Parra. Swing and a miss, strike three. And for Chad Bettis, his first strikeout tonight. Good hammer from Bettis. I mean, that's straight down, 12 to 6. Well, one of the things for Chad Bettis in the recent struggles is a lack of fastball command. And look at the green, that's where he wants it. The red, that's the nitro zone. Green down and away to Derek Norris. Oh, the hanging breaking ball up just a little bit, speeds up his bat. The old cement mixer. And we know what happens there with the little cement mixer. He's going to be reaching for a new one. And Norris with the home run, his sixth of the season. Drive down the freeway, you see a big cement truck right yeah. there? You know, what is it, that, that, that slow spin? Yeah. That's like the bad breaking ball. That's what it does, it's the, the old cement mixer. Line drive, another base hit for Norris. That bat's coming alive. Cut down by Parra. And a solid single for Norris. He's two for two. And he's over the 200 mark with the two hits tonight. Hey, taking the soft stuff out of the yard on the pull side and taking the fastball, shortening it up. Nice, compact, quick swing. Generating some serious power up through the arms and the barrel of that bat from the legs. And Derek Norris is on board again. Got cargo in right field and par in left. Two left handed throwing outfielders. And they both have terrific arms. Ramirez grounded to third is first time up. Trying to extend that six game hitting streak. He's hit three home runs this year, all in the last 10 games. Nice dig there by Hundley. 2 0. Pitcher Kastner on deck. Now 
high mark for Chad Bettis was last year in May. He had a no hitter into the eighth inning against Philadelphia. Seven and a third without allowing a hit. Line drive toward the left field corner. Will it get by Para? No, he's able to cut it off, and that will hold the runner. Norris at second base. Ramirez with a close line single. And the Padres with two outs have Norris and Ramirez aboard for Kashner. In the bottom of the order, six, seven, eight. Wallace with a knock and a run. Nor or I'm sorry, Wallace with a knock and a run. Norris with a home run and a single. And now Alexei Ramirez is on board with a single. Some two out clutch hitting by San Diego. Trying to extend the 4-3 lead. Padres scored in the first. The Rockies took the lead on a two run double by Blackman in the second only to find Norris hitting a two run homer and the Padres back in front three to two. They added a run on three consecutive singles in the third inning RBI from Kemp. And try that bunt again. And Colorado gets their third run on the solo homer from Mark Reynolds. That's where we stand here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Two on two up. Oh and two. Kashner has a couple of hits in 12 trips so far this year. Ooh, 55 footer. Good eye by Kashner. Yeah. You see what Bennis is trying to do. Keep the ball down and in, down and away. Boy, big key is to get that guy. If Andrew Kasher could some way work a walk, get a base knock to get John Jay up there with runners in scoring position. Well, that's been his strength all year. Mm -hmm. Way outside with a breaking ball, full count. Chad Bettis about to deliver his 70th pitch of the night. Well, what does he sport? Chad Bettis. This is what he's gotten tonight. 63% on the fastball. The curveball has been a good pitch. Usually some sliders. Runners going and slap foul by Kashner. Get another pitch, three and two. Checking on that El Paso Chihuahua team. They're in a big winning streak. They won again last night, seven to six. That Manny Margot went three for five. They're 32 and 22. They got a four game lead in the Pacific Coast League Division. And ball four, too low. Well earned. Kastner walks to load the bases for John Jay. First walk by Chad Bettis. What a great plate appearance. By Andrew Kashner. Working Bettis, a good eye with pitches out and down out of the zone. And Dick, you mentioned it, the great numbers for John Jay with runners in scoring position. He's hitting over 400, 413. Well, actually, 447 with runners in scoring position. Number, that's the fourth best in the major leagues. So the right man in the right spot for the Padres. Jay singled and scored in the third. First ball hunting. Looks like a little cutter in on the hands of John Jay. Norris at third, Ramirez at second, Kastner fills them up at first. 
Padre over every pillow for John Jay. Ground ball right to the first baseman Reynolds and the inning comes to an end. The Padres strand three and we go on to the top of the fifth inning. Padres four, Rockies three. One of my, my favorite um, icons in sports. I think he's just icon, not just for sports, but just for the whole world. You know the way he carried himself. He brought so much light when he when he when he came to the room. You know I, I was fortunate enough to meet him. Um, you know once at, in spring training, and got to meet him and um, take a picture with him. So that was definitely a highlight of one of my careers. Matt Kemp remembering the legend that was Muhammad Ali. And Matt Kemp happens to be a huge sports memorabilia collector. He has jerseys and he's got all sorts of things from the world of sports. And as far as Muhammad Ali is concerned, he says he has a big photograph that sits in his game room as a tribute. Just a huge fan and an incredible loss to the sports world and the world in general for what he was able to do. All right, thank you, Julie. You remind me that uh my friend uh, Tim Shanahan who wrote the book Running with the Champ my 40 years relationship with Muhammad Ali uh, a year ago uh, I got this phone call from Tim Shanahan I'd never met him and he said uh, I have something I think you'd like I'm a, can I come over to your house I said absolutely he came over and he had been down visiting in Phoenix with with the champ and his wife is a big tennis fan they were watching tennis and my name came up in the course of the conversation about tennis and Ali remembered that I had done some of his fights and he said get me one of those and what Shanahan brought to me was a boxing glove with Muhammad Ali's wow. signature how good is that oh, yeah. that's a good one that's a keeper and and I thought well did he really sign it because the writing is very small on it and uh, talked to some of my doctor friends and with Parkinson's they have to write you know in a small manner otherwise it's all over the place and but that's one of my keepsakes then in, the, in the den. He, uh, Shanahan's, I asked him what was uh, one of your favorite quotes from the champ, and he said, Friend, a friend listens to what you say, a good friend listens to what you don't say. Wow. That's kind of interesting. It's really interesting. There's a lot there. That's a base hit off the glove of Kastner as Carlos Gonzalez leads off the fifth inning. He's walked twice and now an infield hit. Well, Mark Sweeney, the big news of the day, James Shields trade, and that was the topic of discussion a couple innings ago. And you've been traded before, and I gave my perspective, and just want to know from your perspective, both sides, what it was like for you? Well, I, I mean, trading just getting traded changes everything. It just it puts so much, so many thoughts in your mind of why is this team trading me away, and also the good thoughts of well, I'm getting traded to a team that. That must want me. Yeah. Uh, so you battle that mentally, but being that final piece or the 24th, 25th guy on the roster, but getting traded over here, we were in Texas, and and just going into a new locker room, it's so strange. You've you've watched these guys. I watched Tony Gwynn and Ken Caminetti and Wally Joyner, and now you're going into that locker room. Such a great.
feeling for a fan of the game and going into a new situation. Do but you remember who daunting. welcomed you first? You know, it was it was probably the clubhouse guy just trying to tell me, you know, what where, where you were going to be. But uh, and I heard you say this, Mark, too. The magical moment of any player is going into a locker room, a big league locker room, and seeing your jerseys wrapped yeah. around the locker room. Yeah. It, it never gets old, and that that image in your in your mind goes a long way. They see your now your new jersey with your name. Yeah. Two and zero oh now to Trevor Story and a big cut and a foul back. But I think the big thing today, guys, and, and it, it, you start reflecting on what's going on with James Shields and and the teammate and, and what he meant to that clubhouse and everything else. It's a punch in the gut if you're a teammate of his mm -hmm. because it's reality. You know what happens. It can happen to you. It yep. can happen to you. So it, it can go two ways. You can feel sorry for what's going on and where this team's possibly heading. Or you can go out there and say, listen, uh, it, I don't. I want to prevent this. I want to stay here. This is a great place to play, and let's make this good. Let's be a part of that. So it's it's a decision-making make, time for all of those guys in the locker room. And none of them have any control over what's going that's to happen. Right. And, it's, and that's the business part of baseball, and they all do understand that. They don't have to like it. I mean, unless you're a 10 5 guy, you got a no trade clause or contract. Those are far and few between these days. Two and two to story. He takes strike three call. Good pitch from Kastner. His third strike up. I think we just saw a lane changer from Andrew Kastner on the hand. The two seamer starts off the plate. And look at Derek Norris doesn't even move his glove. Trevor goes down looking. And that's the end of that story. I like that lane changer. That's yeah. good. Gerardo Parra now the hitter. He's grounded to first and grounded into a double play as last time. You know that ruckus in the background. The, the dreaded wave has flown into Petco Park. I guess it just got through all the screen. You know, there's a whole screening mechanism to try to stop that. But uh, it was able to weave its way in here. Actually, I really love the way. Like, <laughs> do you? Yeah, it's just I wish they'd do it every inning. Thank you. <laughs> well, the Cardinals defeated the Giants tonight, seven to four. Dodgers are leading Atlanta one nothing in the fifth. Chop foul. Arizona lost to uh, Chicago today. What, what are you guys doing? You? It just came around. It's your turn. I'm biting my lip. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> I got a bone to pick with you guys. Uh oh. Oh, why? You know, after our pre. Pre game. Sharply Ramirez flips with a glove back to first. A double play. That is the double play of the season for the Padres. Ramirez with a glove. A great stretch and pick up at first by Myers. Oh my. I love the double play. The hell with the wave. How about the double play? <laughs> Who said that?
play of the game. Look, Ramirez on his knees with a glove flips. And Salarte off balance, one hopper. And Myers digs. That is a sensational double play. That's gold glove caliber all the way around. A nice pick by Will Myers just getting Para. Para's second double play. He's hit the ball hard twice and for two outs. And now Myers, another shot. This into the left field corner. He's on his way to second. Fast fielding by Para. Got to hurry in there. Good throw. The throw gets away but backed up by Reynolds at first. So Mark Reynolds saves that from the... Uh, Myers making it to third, and how about Will Myers? He's got a single, he's got a double, and a home run. He's a triple shy of the cycle tonight. I think we've heard that before on this homestand. That's right. Mm -hmm. See Will Myers continuing to be aggressive in the strike zone, looking for that mistake. And when he is hot, he can handle the barrel. We're seeing that pull side of Will Myers tonight as well. Well, the Padres with the 4-3 lead as we enter the bottom of the fifth inning. And here's Matt Kemp. He drove in a run with a single to left field. His last time, his 39th RBI of the season. He started tonight with the fourth best total in that RBI column in the National League. Boy, Meyer's really making some good swings tonight. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're swinging the bat like that, keep swinging it. Pitchers are going to be probably a little bit more tentative, and that's when the walks start to come in because they're afraid to throw you a breaky ball. You're afraid you might hang it. You try to pick with the, the fastball, next thing you know, ball four. And you uh, see this situation here with Matt Kemp, and they're playing straight in the Blackman was actually in the right center gap. Now they might have changed what they're going to try to attack with Matt Kemp because they know this situation. He needs to advance Myers not only to try to score him, but get him to third base at least in the situation. Tempting hole on the right side, Mark Sweeney. Let's see if they really pound him in in this situation or go to that slider off the plate. Went after a ball skipping in. Yeah, you know, one thing that I learned a long time ago as a pitcher in a situation like this, you want to try to keep the ball in front of the runner. So what does that mean? Well, they're loaded on the left side heavy, right? You want to pound him inside because Matt Camp's a pole guy, but he can't fight it off. But keeping the ball in front of the runner here to keep that guy at second base. If he hits it this way, he's going to be standing on third base. Slaps that one off to the right side. Well, Matt's frustrated himself. He got a pitch he could execute going to that right center gap. Well, this hit by direction for Matt Kemp, that left center. And that's this year so you understand the middle of the field is where he does most of his damage. Pettis backs him off the plate two and two. Mark did you also try when you had that hard fastball in maybe a softer breaking ball to go along with that? Because when you speed up a guy's bat like that it will keep that ball on the ground a lot of the times and in front of that runner because it is a soft bat or a soft pitch speeding up his bat pulling the baseball you bet and he pulls it to short they got to play a third and they get him so a risky move by Myers to try to move to third with a ball hit in front of him that's kind of a no no I think Will's agreeing with you there he's shaking his head very frustrated he's got to still be on second base well you know it was close but still And Mark did you see him look at the the fielder I mean in a position like that you can't look if you're going to go you got to go yeah and I think he meant he realized that he got caught in no yeah. man's land and he had to take that aggressive approach hope for a bad throw. So Kemp safe on the fielder's choice and erases uh, Myers out of a scoring position and here's Salarte he struck out and hit into a double play tonight. Well, the Padres have had two men thrown out at third base in this game. And that's kept it close. Four to three San Diego. And both times it was Myers uh, thrown out at third. 
He tried to go to third on the base hit by by Kemp back in the third inning. Chop foul. Well, typically as a base runner in those situations, you have to make sure that you can get past the baseball. It has to be to your left side. Even that ground ball that's right at you, if you have a good break, you can beat that shortstop and that throw to third base. So that's your thought process. Anything to your left as a base runner, you can advance. Anything to your right, especially with no outs, you have to be extra cautious. Myers ruminating over the fact that he has been thrown out at third base twice tonight. It's okay to be aggressive, and Andy Green praises his team whenever they play an aggressive style, but sometimes the aggression uh, isn't the right call. You run yourself into a key out at third. Two and two to Salarte. Padres four runs on nine hits. Melvin up to next. Rockies three runs and seven base hits. One out here in the home half of the fifth. Another pitch up and in. And a full count to Young. Well, one thing for sure tonight, guys, I've noticed that Chad Bettis, he's not afraid lefties or righties to pound the fastball in. Got to be aggressive. If you're going to get it in there, get it in there. You'd rather miss on the batter's box side rather than on the plate, that's for sure. Way out in front. Solarte count remains full. Well, tomorrow, remember, fans, it's not an afternoon game because of the rock and roll marathon here in San Diego. The game time has been pushed to 6:10. We'll be on the air at 5:30 here for Padres Live, the pregame show. With Mike and Mark at 5:30. Another foul. Then it's. The Atlanta Braves coming to town Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. At this point, Friedrich, Colin Ray, and Pomeran scheduled to pitch for San Diego against Perez, Blair, and Turan of the Braves. And tomorrow, bullpen day for the Padres. Ground ball right side and under the glove of LeMahieu, a base hit. For Salarte, and now all the more important, the put out a third of Myers. That could have been an RBI. So Kemp moves to second on the single by Salarte with one out, and that brings up Melvin Upton. About 3 2 count, and you get that fastball count. That's your one thought as a hitter. Especially with a guy on first base, you can utilize that hole in between first and the second baseman. It's nice hitting by Salarte. I was really surprised LeMay who didn't come up with that. Sure, he had to die, but the that's a gold glover out there. He's made many nice plays. Ten hits now for the Padres against Bettis. To oh, a, believe it. One out in the fifth. Upton's hit the ball hard twice for outs. Good plays made by LeMayhew and Story to take a hit away from him. Arenado for one back to first pulls him off the bag and so the Padre inning is still alive. Upton safe on the fielder's choice. Why he didn't go to second base for the double play is kind of I'm right there with you Dick. That's a tough play. Yeah. Yeah that ground ball is on his glove side easy transfer to go to second base. I think he had that thought in his mind already. That's a surprising, surprising defensive move by a gold glover. Yeah, with second thoughts, Arenado, you can just see that's going right through his mind. Why, why didn't I go right to second? That could have been an easy double play. So the Padres get a second life here with two outs and two on. And Brett Wallace, a bloop single to center. He scored a run and struck out the last time. The 
Inside. They play Wallace in the outfield the other way. Blackman out into left center field. Fargo and right well off the line. Oh, good throwing arms in the corners. They're afforded to play a little bit deeper because of those throwing arms. Right back to Bettis and the rest is easy. So the Padres with an opportunity can't come up with an added run. It stays at four to three. Game summary. Will Myers got the Padres going with that long home run in the first inning, one nothing. But Charlie Blackman brought in two rocky runs with this double to right center field, 2 1 Colorado in the second. But Derek Norris with a man aboard lines a home run, and the Padres reclaim the lead 3 2. Through the shift, Matt Kemp drives in his 39th run, 4 2, and Mark Reynolds, a long high shot to center for the home run Colorado to make it 4 3 as we move on to the sixth inning our Harris game summary. It'll be the lower third of the order for the Rockies Reynolds Hundley in the pitcher spot. There. Reynolds is two for two a home run a double Hundley is two for two a single and a double. On the edge strike one. There's a little nugget about Andrew Castro since he's been a Padre when he gets four runs or more he's 19 and four. I Padres like that. Is. Padres need to add on though. Get some insurance. One and one to Reynolds. And the next pitch will be. 100 from the right hander from Texas. Little low says plate umpire Baker. And stays at two and two. The bullpen is busy. Kevin Quackenbush, the right hander, called up from El Paso for the game tonight. Brad Hand, the southpaw. Andy Green hoping that he wouldn't have to get into the bullpen too early tonight because it's going to be the bullpen's game tomorrow with the trade of James Shields. Popped up right side. Myers with another chance. And the first out here in the sixth. Greater coverage of baseball. Yes, sir. Brought to you by T Mobile and our. Major League notes. How about Steven Strasburg? A thousand strikeouts already. Wow. He lost today to Cincinnati. Jason Hamill, 5 3 win against Arizona. And Jeff Samarja of the Giants, five innings, six earned runs. And the Giants lose at St. Louis 7 to 4. Yeah, Jeff Samarja had a 4 0 lead in that game and allowed all of those home runs for the St. Louis Cardinals to come back in that game. 
And how about the Cubbies? Last 10 games, 9 and 1. They got it going right about now. And a win today, 10 and 1. Long throw, Ramirez on one hop in time to get Hundley. From the outfield grass, Ramirez takes care of Nick Hundley. And the Major League win leaders at this point, Arietta, following up his sensational Cy Young year of a year ago with nine, Cueto with nine, Sale on the south side of Chicago with nine, and Strasburg with nine. Well, out of this group, I, I mean, I would take Clayton Kershaw during the course of a season if I had to win a ball game. But right now, uh, Jake Arietta is pretty. Uh, pretty darn good right now but Mark Sweeney is it a pick'em you think uh, I think it is a pick'em in that group because of how successful they've been I think Chris Sale really sticks out to me of how he got out to such a hot start and the team did as well and Johnny Cueto as advertised we've seen him plenty of times against the Padres he has been phenomenal in a Giants uniform I think there's any correlation between that big deal that uh, Strasburg signed and now maybe taking off a little bit of the pressure and having the year he's had huh yeah I think he's he's just looked like the guy that they were expecting right and I think injury really comes into play but yes I think that contract definitely gave him confidence Christian Adamas is pinch hitting for Chad Bettis with two out spaces empty here in the sixth hitting 240 limited at bats only 50 and he grounds that one into left field for a base hit that's eight hits now for the visitors from Colorado and takes them to the top of the order and Charlie Blackman. And it takes us to this reminder our game presented in HD by Sony. Blackman with a big blow in the second inning with two men aboard a two out double to right center that knocked in two. And here comes Andy Green and with two outs here in the sixth inning. That's the walk of a manager about to make a pitching change. 105 pitches from the right hander Kashner in the game. Yeah, maybe he's going to say to Kashner, do you think you can get one more out? You know, we've seen this from yeah. Andy Green and the conversations he has. And I like this. Absolutely. I like this as a style because you want to look the pitcher in the eyes and see what he has. And I think this is well timed by manager Andy Green. Gives Kashner a chance to grab a breath here or two. And quite frankly, you know, Andrew Kashner, he wants to be in this situation. And when you are a big time, you want to be the big time pitcher and you want to get out of this jam, even though you're over 100 pitches, yeah, you want to show that you can get out of this. You don't want to be looking over your shoulder and having somebody else coming in. You want to take care of business right now. Does that give you a boost of confidence? If no you're question about, yeah, no question about it. No question about it. A tough hitter after striking out in the first the two run double in the second and he lined one sharply to the left his last time. In there with a breaking ball. So Chad Bettis his evening has ended with five innings of work allowing four earned runs and ten hits. Oh, did it hit him? Yes, it did. That uh, pushes the tying run into scoring position as Blackman takes first base, hit by a pitch, and now indeed Green will make the move to go to the bullpen, a, a double switch as well. well the four seamer just yanked it a little bit. And Marista comes into the game replacing Brett Wallace. So you can put Amarista in the ninth spot in the batting order. So a break in the action here in the sixth inning. The Padres holding on to a one run lead.
Change, and while we've got a moment, MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, delivers everything you've come to expect and more. Watch every out-of-market game live in HD on over 400 supported devices. It includes a free subscription to AtBat Premium, the number one app for live baseball. Blackout and other restrictions apply, so visit MLB.TV for details. And our pitching change brought to you by El Cajon Ford as Kevin Quackenbush down to El Paso briefly. Now back on the big league mound. And his first pitch is in there to T.J. J. LeMahieu. 0 for 3. He's hit all three times to the shortstop. Thrown out by Ramirez the first two times and safe on Ramirez error the last time. Nothing two more a reliever wants to than to leave those inherited runners out there. Tying run at second. Swing and a miss. 91 on the fastball. We saw the defensive alignment. John Jay really shifted over into that right center gap. And left fielder up then, then well off the line. Trying to protect that left center field gap. Interesting because LeMayu does tend to hit to right field, but he's hit all three times tonight to the shortstop. Yeah. And Marista comes into the game on the double switch and inserted it at second base. Salarte moves from second back to his normal position at third with Brett Wallace out of the game. Well, Dick, to your point, too, a lot of the pull hitters will be on the ground, but if they hit the ball in the air, most of the time that's right center gap. Outside, two and two. Quackenbush can get the final out. Kastner stands to be the winning pitcher of record. Up from 0 and 2 to 3 and 2. With Nolan Arenado next. Adamas at second. Blackman at first and a 3 2 pitch. And the runners will return. Mark Sweeney, you've been in this situation before 3 2, two outs, runners are going. I would guess that if there's ever a spot where a hitter has to stay within himself and not over swing, because yeah. you know you're probably getting a fastball, right? Well, you peek over your left shoulder and you see Nolan Arenado, understand the production behind you. There's protection, so yes, you're sitting fastball looking for that middle, middle away and yeah. trying to stay short possible. And ball four. He had him two strikes and loses him, and the bases are loaded. Loaded up for Nolan Arenado, the league's top home run and RBI leader. So with two outs, Adamas with a punch single to left field. Blackman hit by a pitch and now LeMahieu the walk. Arenado has walked, struck out, and popped up. Well, Arenado loves these situations, especially early in the at bat. Breaking ball in there. Good hammer. Ninety two on the fastball from Quackenbush. That's about the top of his yep. velocity. You're absolutely right. The Rockies have him loaded up with two outs here in the sixth inning. Padres with a four three lead. Swing and a miss and he's going for four runs on one cut. He almost pulled the Bartolo Colon losing the helmet on the swing. High fastball up around the shoulders. Go up there again. I would. I'm going curveball. Ground ball weakly to first and Myers to the bag. The inning is over. The Rockies strand three. Middle of the sixth inning. Wackenbush gets that elusive final out. And Andrew Kashner, the first over there to congratulate and cheer. It's 4 3 San Diego.
last half inning for Kevin Quackenbush against Arenado with the bases loaded. Starting him off soft with the curveball, trying to go up the ladder. Keep that pitch in mind. There's a swing and miss. Mark Sweeney, you called it after that pitch. Well, he showed him that breaking ball, which was really important, but was able to pitch out of the strike zone because of strike one and really put Arenado on the defense. Welcome back, Quack. And yeah, with the bases loaded, Arenado chewing himself out for having such a weak swing. Fooled uh, on the breaking ball as former Padre Chad Pauls makes his 23rd appearance of the season. Well, high numbers with the ERA. It's Chad's 23rd game. You see the splits there, and we know him for the hard, heavy sinker, the slider. And when he's on his game, yeah, he throws a heavy ball, which produces a lot of grounders. He'll face Norris Ramirez and Alexi Amarista, the bottom three in the order. And a ground ball, Norris, right to Arenado. One pitch, one out. Norris had homered a two run shot and single tonight. And finally elevating that batting average up into the 200s. Ramirez grounded to third and singled to left. But Falls has given up some base hits this year. Opposing batters hitting 308. Center Blackman cruises in under it for the second out. Well, let's take a game break and go up to Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles where Clayton Kershaw is on the mound. And pitching another beauty. Dodgers leading 1 0 on the strong left arm of Kershaw has allowed just three hits. The Braves and Dodgers each with three. Filthy. Man amongst boys when it comes to that. And he has his stuff and it's really the difference maker has been the slider for his repertoire came into the league with a fastball curveball occasional change up the slider took him to the different level and Marista comes out swinging his first at bat getting in the ninth spot in the order so the Giants losing today the Dodgers have a chance to pick up a game they're now five back they could move to four and a half should they win. San Diego putting pressure on Arizona to get out of the cellar in the National League. And there's a shot to left field for a base hit. And Marista goes the other way. The 11th hit for the Padres tonight. The first off, Chad Qualls. Now we saw the splits for Chad Qualls. 375 against left handed hitters. That increases. Really nice hitting by Amarista. Brings up the leadoff man, John Jay. A single in three trips tonight. He's grounded out twice to the first baseman as well. Shift on for Jay. Only Arenado on the left side. Ball gets away, and that'll move Amarista into scoring position. A pass ball charged to Nick Hunley. Might have been crossed up. What a very catchable ball. Frog with the tennis racket. Yeah. Check that glove. Yeah, that fan, uh, fan sent you a nice ceramics of an yeah. actual frog with the tennis racket. Yeah, absolutely, a couple of them. Yeah. <laughs> what do you, you have with those? That? We're on. Uh oh. It. We're on the case. Who's we? Here we go. Our lovely and talented stage manager Sheila Simpson. And it gets away again. And the third base, Amarista, a second pass ball. Ribbit. Can't believe it. Our fans, uh, not only here at the ballpark, but following us on Fox Sports San Diego, we can say they're the they're the best. They not only listen, they deliver. Yeah, Nick, having a little trouble there, and here's my little frog with a tennis racket. <laughs> Terrific. So you're saying it came in like this? Yeah, you know, frog is very way. bouncy, and then you add the tennis racket, and then it's really bouncy. <laughs> but the fact that somebody actually, I wonder if those are those are like Hummels made, now. Yeah, very expensive. 
Oh, that one got away from Hundley as well, but a foul tip. Hey, don't get me wrong. Big fan of Nick Hundley. He's a too. Padre. Love the guy like a brother. It happens to the best of them. I think Nick is kind of even shaking his head a little bit, looking at that Guante and saying, come on now. Yeah, just like a tennis player looks at the racket as if, what are you doing to me, yeah. racket? Yeah, come on. Love Nick. See if Jay can pick up the run. 4 3 Padres. 3 and 1. It's a big insurance run out there. Will Myers, red hot. A triple away from the cycle, Myers on deck. Well, because of his success tonight, you wonder if John Jay in this situation is going to get a better pitch to hit. John Jay has been known to look for that ball away and go the other way with it. And he goes the other way, but foul. That gentleman going five rows back and read it just right. Full count to John Jay. Strike three call. He knew it. So Qualls pitches out of a two out man at third situation and we go to the seventh 4 3 Padres. Brought to you by Saquon Casino. Sign up for the new Padres Club card today. And by Mercury Insurance. We're on a mission to save you money. Log on to mercuryinsurance.com today. A couple of Padre home runs this evening. A solo by Will Myers in the first inning and a two-run shot by Derek Norris in the second. The fourth run scoring on three consecutive singles. The third by Matt Kemp. Back in the fifth inning, and that's the difference in the game 4 3. Hey, crunch time here in the seventh for Kevin Quackenbush, Dick. You're talking Carlos Gonzalez story, Para. You know, he got through it last inning with that nice curveball to Arenado, but we got a one run game here. This is an important inning for Kevin Quackenbush. Gonzalez has been aboard all three at bats, two walks and a single. Oh, and two. Try to get him to go up the ladder. One and two. Well, if you're looking ahead, you know, usually the blueprint is Maurer in the eighth and Rodney in the ninth for San Diego if they have the lead. It's a safe situation. But uh, Andy Green has said that after what happened with the Mariners series, that kind of moving things around a little bit, we might see Ryan Bookter being the eighth inning guy before Fernando Rodney. So stay tuned to that one. 
See how that's going to pan out. And we're just guessing with the bullpen day already announced for tomorrow because of the trade of James Shields today that Luis Perdomo may get the start. Mm -hmm. Two and two. And three and two. So he had him down two strikes, but now the full count. The attendance tonight on this Saturday, 25,503. Big pitch here. Three and two. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Blew it by Gonzalez. He may have gone after ball four. Tonight's cold hard facts are brought to you by Clean Crisp Coors Light. Colorado Rockies since 1993. They've been shut out 151 times away from home, most in the majors, but at home, shut out the least in the majors, and that figures Coors Field a, a hitter's haven. Tough for a pitcher to get through nine innings without a run scoring. Trevor Story outside, ball one. Infield hit in three at bats tonight. He had a single in four trips last night. Big time pull on the infield for San Diego against Story. Alexei Ramirez literally in that 5.5 hole. There's Alexei. And with the big hole this way on the infield. Jason Mott on the right. And Miguel Castro was joining Mott in that Rocky bullpen. The 23 year old story, a sensational start here in 2016. He was highly regarded out of high school. And he takes Steve right to. He's a first round pick, 45th overall, and he was the story in Colorado in April with those 10 home runs. Most ever by a rookie in April in National League history. That is strike three call. Right down the middle, and Quackenbush has a. A couple of strikeouts to open the seventh inning and two tough hitters, Gonzalez and Story. Totally locked up Story with the four seam fastball. Just watching it go on by. And that looked like a strike even from the rooftop. And our rooftop shot is brought to you by Pinnacle on the Park. Nice one, Professor. I wonder when they're going to invite us over to that penthouse suite. Maybe do a pregame over there, huh? Well, you know. Maybe on an off day we'll go over there. Make it a you know, little mm -hmm. party. Fouled at the plate by Para. He is grounded out and hit into two double plays. Nicely done by Solarte and Ramirez on that one. And the next one you're going to see sensational. Watch the glove work of Ramirez. Out of the glove with a flip. And Solarte completes the double play and the pick by Myers at first base. That was terrific. Wing and a foul tip. 0-2 to Para. You know, a couple of batters, Quackenbush has gone deep in the counts, some full counts, but I tell you what, other than that, he's throwing tonight like he wants no part of going back to El Paso. One of the player moves made today, along with the trade of James Shields to the Chicago Chicago White Sox. There's the line score. Blackman's hit was a big one, a two run double. And Reynolds down there in the seven hole, two hits, one a home run. McConnelly with a single and a double. Swing and a miss, strike three, and Quackenbush 
Punches out the side. Gonzalez, Story, and Para. And it'll be Will Myers leading off. Bottom of the seventh. Myers has a home run, a double, and a single. Can he come up with that elusive triple and become the second man to hit for the cycle in Padre history? Time up, launches the home run to left center field, nearly 400 feet. Second time, a bullet to left, cut off by Para, long single. And then next time, another drive to left, and this one a double. So three for three and a chance for the cycle, but the tough one is the triple. And to get one here, you almost have to hit it to that 396 sign in right center field. That makes it a longer relay to third, and it's a long part of the yard and they might be playing him to pull the ball which mm -hmm. would have a blackman farther away from the ball. Let's see it's a tough shot but uh, you don't get many opportunities to hit for the big four single double triple home run. It's happened four times but Will Myers has been one hit shy of that cycle. Yeah hitting one to the outfield and getting a bounce off one of those uh, signs out there possibly to elude an outfielder so you can get a little bit extra and get that extra 90 feet. And you know he's aware of the fact that he's a triple mm -hmm. shy. Kemp and then Solarte to follow here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Jason Mott taking over the pitching duties here in the bottom of the seventh. Strength. Well, Brandon Maurer is up and getting hot in that Padre bullpen. Pulled foul, just gets along the dirt path to third. Born in Port Huron, Michigan, attended college at Iona in New Rochelle, New York, with the Cardinals for six years and then last year with the Cubs. Good swing, one and two. Been in pressure situations. Remember that year with the Cardinals, 2012, he saved 42 games, so he knew it's all about in crunch time. 
Signed with Colorado in the offseason as a free agent. He went around strike three. One away here in the seventh. And time now for in the driver's seat brought to you by Kia. Except for that strikeout. Will Myers with those big strong farm boy hands of his had a tight grip on that steering wheel of driver's seat. In the last six games hitting at 444 and a couple of home runs and a half dozen RBIs and a single double home run tonight. Yeah, now try to forget that strikeout. And if he does, in fact, get another at bat, put a good at bat together. Matt Kemp takes a strike. That's an RBI single in three at bats. Well, only the fifth game for Jason Mott. So a small sample size. Got the slider, fastball, change up. And the lefties, 545 in the short time that he's been up. In a rocky uniform. Made his Rockies debut uh, three weeks ago in Boston. He'd been on the disabled list with a right shoulder strain since spring training. All the way to the screen. Oh, wow. Did you see his reaction after that pitch? Wow. <laughs> He yanked and pulled that breaking ball and he was really upset with himself. Watch after he throws this pitch. Goodness. Mm. I mean, he's 0 and 2 now, 1 and 2. I almost thought that he might have injured himself, that he was mad because of something, you know, he's coming back from right shoulder strain. Fire in his belly, huh? Tight one at Petco tonight, 4 3 Padres. Mott's one of those guys who made the conversion from catcher to pitcher. First year plus behind the dish. Ground ball into the shift and a shortstop Arenado actually over there. No, that's a story making the play. And the shift works again for the Colorado Rockies. Second out and Jan Salarte steps up. Struck out, hit into a double play and single. <laughs> Taken all the way for a strike. It's interesting, Mott. He played for, as a professional, as a catcher, for three years before he made that conversion. Signed in 2003, 2006, hopped up on the hill. And I tell you what, you love stories like that, especially being successful as a closer at the big league level, yeah. like he was with the Cardinals. <laughs> oh, and two. Well, he's really animated out there, isn't he? <laughs> Telling himself to stay through the pitches and. Stay on the pitch, go towards home plate. Yes. Qualifies in the fidgety league, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> like the old town team here, a little pot hearts, hard ball on Saturday, huh? Yeah. Go out there. Play the guys over in that other village. Count stays at one and two. It appears it'll be Brandon Maurer in the eighth inning. Fly ball slice it to left and it'll fall on the track out of play.
Cubs beat Arizona 5 to 3. Dodgers still leading Atlanta 1 0 in the seventh inning, and the Giants lost at St. Louis 7 to 4. The other NL West scores. And the Cubs with their 10th win in 11 games, beating Arizona. Another souvenir. Boy, Mott still has the heat. That was 97. To left and into the glove of Gerardo Parra for the final out. On to the eighth inning. Padres protecting a 4 3 lead. To Pico Park. It's a 4 3 Padre lead right now. Top of the eighth. Mark and I are working on Padres Live, the post game show brought to you by Cox Communications. Mark, great to see Kevin Quackenbush back in the big leagues. It is, Mike. And you know what? Going to the sixth inning after that DJ, DJ LeMahieu walk, he pitched out of it getting Arenado, but really good performance by Quackenbush. A good bounce back getting the call up. I'll tell you what looks really good. Your mug on this shirt. No, it's not that good. You yeah. know who's really good? Ah. The professor. Yeah, buddy. Uh, this is my favorite in Marks, too. How about that? How about that? Oh, How about my. How about <laughs> when we see you in a post-game show, guys, we're going to have shirts for you. Of course, we'll have you covered there. We're also going to talk about the Padres' ability to shut down Nolan Arenado to this point. Hopefully a nice Padre win to boot. So we'll look forward to seeing you after the final out. Even got the pocket square on the T-shirt. How about that? How about our fan, Diego fan of the game tonight? Well, we're going to talk about that after we remind you to stay tuned for Padres Live, the post game show, right after the final out. Hopefully, to celebrate a Padre win. And the first pitch is swung on and a high, high fly ball to center field. Mark Reynolds piercing the Saturday night darkness and down into the glove of Jay for the first down. Yeah, well, Bitmoji night, and the T-shirts are all out, and I like how they got it all spread out. Different personalities, players. Really want to thank Fox Sports San Diego, the Padres, for putting us on those shirts. Pretty darn cool. Boy, Jeff Lau must have stayed up all night drawing those oh, things. You know, he's an artist. I didn't know. Him. Yes, he is. Nick Hundley, two for three, a single and a double, and a good play made by Ramirez at shortstop to throw him out the last time. Not calling the low strike tonight. Jordan Baker behind the plate, both sides. 28th game, 28th game for Brandon. Trying to bring that ERA down. And that will do it. Line drive single by Hundley, three for four for Nick. Tying run aboard. And that'll bring up a pinch hitter, Ryan Rayburn. He was hitting cleanup last night.
Mauer trying to bounce back from uh, that disastrous game the other night against Seattle when the Padres gave up a 10 run lead 12 to 2. It's, uh, five of the runs uh, went on Mauer's card. Rayburn hitting 259 on the season, but as a pinch hitter, he's 5 for 18 with two home runs. Beware. Infield looking for a chance at a third double play. Healthy cut. And Fernando Rodney hoping he'll get a chance to pick up his 11th save of the year. There haven't been many opportunities of late. So ball two strikes on Rayburn. All the scoring tonight in the first four innings. Padres with a run in the first, two in the second, a run in the third. Swing and a miss. Strike three. And may have gotten a piece of it on the foul tip. Two away. Well, still tough duty for Ryan Rayburn because coming in off the bench to pinch hit, and I don't care who you're facing, you throw 95 plus, that's tough to catch up to. And a big strikeout for Brandon Maurer. Leadoff hitter Charlie Blackman. Two run double back in the second. The other run from Mark Reynolds' home run. And the Rockies trail 4 3 here in the eighth. Blackman hit by a pitch the last time. That was the final man faced by Andrew Kastner, who stands to be the winner if the Padres can close it out. Well, Miguel Castro up again on the left. Estevez, a right hander as well. We're going to have a double switch here as Travis Jankowski. Replaces Kemp and Wright. Maybe this is just a defensive replacement. Yeah, he's going to replace Maurer as well. So we'll take a break with the Padres in front, four to three. Here comes Rodney. Sports San Diego presents Padres Baseball, brought to you by San Diego's best window company. Simply great windows. By Petco, your complete pet store. And by your San Diego County Lexus dealers. 
And the pitching change for Fernando Rodney. They're going to ask him to get the final four outs tonight. As he comes in with the tying run Nick Hundley at first base. Two out and Charlie Blackman the leadoff hitter. Well last outing was against the Mariners back on the second of June. For Fernando that was back on Thursday. One inning one strikeout. Very stingy has been Rodney only eight hits in 20 innings. He has not allowed an earned run. And batter is hitting only 125. He's been nearly perfect. Jankowski takes over for Kemp and Wright. Blackman. Strikeout, two run double, line out, and hit by a pitch. Outfield at doubles defense depth. Back a couple of steps. Ninety two on the fastball doesn't get the call. Well, the all star logo. Fully prominent on the left sleeve and on the side of the cap as well. Swing and a miss on a changeup. That was a dandy. Charlie Blackman actually losing his balance on this one on the changeup, ending up in the right handed hitter's batter's box. Swinging so hard, his eyes were closed. Boy, a couple of pitches on the border and not yeah. getting the call. We've seen that a handful of times tonight. So three and one now to Blackman with DJ LeMahieu waiting his turn. Two out. Another pitch right on the edge, and it's ball four. Boy, a tight strike zone in that at bat. And that pushes Hundley into scoring position. Blackman, potential go ahead run, goes to first on the walk. LeMahieu walked the last time, the other three at bats. He's grounded the ball to shortstop Ramirez. Outfield swings around to play him to hit to right. Took a good rip at that one. Well, got to be careful on that changeup. As we talk about the defense, Melvin Upton Jr. over towards that left center field gap, and John Jay over near the right center field gap, allowing a big hole there. But what I'm saying is, if you hang that changeup, he's got a chance to speed up his bat and hit the ball down that way. So it better be in a good location. He's accustomed to going four outs. And he's ahead on the count two strikes. Two outs, Hundley the tying run at second. Blackman, the go ahead score at first, and there's the balk. And the runners will move up now. Both men in scoring position. The tying run at third and the go ahead score at second on the balk by Rodney. Caught his spikes on the rubber, it appeared. You know, his. Take a look at his kick leg. Yeah. You're better off just throwing the baseball towards home play. I mean, spike it, stop the clock. Mm. Terribly awkward moment. So the Rockies on a single, a walk, and a balk have two men in scoring position in this one run game. Padres four, Colorado three. Two strikes on LeMahieu. 
the inside. Arenado on deck. Chopped over the mound. That's a very tough play for Ramirez. Can he make it? Yes, he does. Nails LeMayhew by a half step, and the inning comes to an end. Well done by the veteran Ramirez at shortstop, and on to the eighth, still 4-3 Padres. It's never easy to make a trade and trade a guy that you think a lot of and James Shields. Um, but on the flip side, you get two players you're really excited about and, you know, and, and, and some flexibility. And, you know, you, you, I think uh, you know, that part's exciting, trying to figure out, okay, what's, what's, the, what's the challenge to try to get this team over, over the hump? And I think uh, even though it hasn't happened for us yet in terms of, like, getting to the point where we're playing consistent baseball and consistent winning baseball, I think, like, the, the ride and the process of getting to that point is the fun part, honestly. AJ Preller explaining the trade today. The Padres acquired Eric Johnson, a 26 year old right hander, former University of California star, second round pick of the White Sox in 2011, International League Pitcher of the Year last year, and also a 17 year old with a familiar name, Fernando Tatis Jr., for Shields in a swap made today. And it's busy time for Preller, who now is concentrating on the June draft next Thursday the Padres have three first round picks and six in the first 85 more than any other major league team so a lot of late nights going on here at Petco Park with the scouting crew Melvin Upton then Brett Wallace and Derek Norris with Miguel Castro on the mound this big lanky right hander he can get it up there in a hurry he sure can all six five of him 190 pounds fastball change up slider Kid averages about 96, but he can get up there at 99, around 100 miles an hour. We saw him in Colorado. He pits very well yep. in relief. Upton is grounded out three times. And sometimes command can be an issue for Castro, so the Padres have to be patient. Hey, draw a walk or two, and then come up with oh, a big hit. Hadn't come close to throwing a strike. Three and zero. Oh. Just recalled from Triple A Albuquerque a couple of weeks ago, Castro. He was on the DL for a while as well with a right shoulder inflammation. Been a tough year for Wald Weiss. Team is 24 and 30. 11 games out at the start tonight. Taken all away by Upton, 3 and 1. Rodney will. Be thinking about those three, Arenado, Gonzalez, and Story, all with home run power in the ninth inning. 
Hey, there are saves, and then there are big time saves. Right field and hit well, but Gonzalez has a beat on it and one away. Well, Melvin had the right idea. That was off the sweet spot, but played him correctly out there in right field, and Carlos Gonzalez hauls it in. Travis Jankowski will hit for the first time in Brett Wallace's spot. Wallace went one for three tonight, scored a run. Camp's RBI single, the difference in the game, 4 3. Jankowski replacing him defensively. Only 43 at bats for Travis. As Derek Norris with a two run home run tonight on deck. He's shown his immense talent as a defensive outfielder, Jankowski, but very few chances to swing the bat. So for a young player, he's had to be really patient. And he drives that one by the dive of Arenado, takes a big turn. And will hold. Oh, a one out single. Jankowski got it through that left side. Arenado was well off the bag. So, beating the shift, and the Padres now have some speed on the bases with Jankowski. Extra base hit here, splitting the gap. Could spell a run and some insurance for the Padres. A dozen hits tonight for San Diego. They've lost some opportunities. A couple of outs made at third by Will Myers that have taken them out of it. Possible scoring innings. Two run homer for Norris in the second, a line single to right in the fourth, and he grounded to third his last time. Pops it up. Right side, LeMayhew calling. Two away. And it's our Carl's Jr. star of the game, Derek Norris, with that two run shot to left field. Norris. Collecting his sixth home run of the season. The man aboard. And also a line drive to right. Our Carl's Jr. star of the game. Derek Norris now above the 200 mark as well. So two outs to Alexei Ramirez. A single and three at bats. Also grounded out and fly to center. Jankowski with two outs, a threat to go. Not this time. Ball one inside. That's a strike one and one although it seemed well off the plate. Jankowski has five steals. He goes and the pitch is fouled. Had a good break too. Mm -hmm. And he got a breaking ball to run on. Castro flipped up a breaking ball there a slider. Off speed pitch. And that comes into play once in a while rather than a 96 or 97 mile an hour fastball from the 21 year old Castro. Only 21. Live arm. The tip of the Rodney Camp, if you might say. Yes. For Castro. Or is it off angle? Back to the mound. And that's it for the Padres in the eighth inning. Here come the big guys in the middle of the order. Arenado, Gonzalez, and Story against Rodney in the ninth.
A couple of home runs leading the Padres to the 4-3 lead as we open the ninth inning. And Fernando Rodney trying to get the final four outs and save the win for Cashner. Arenado has walked. He's 0 for 3 tonight. Struck out, popped up, and grounded out. And grounded out with the bases loaded the last time. And these two have met, obviously, before. Well, down and in, up and away, trying to mix it up. You cannot fall into a pattern against Nolan Arenado. We have the 95 mile hour here, and then look at that 82 mile an hour changeup. The differential and the movement is so very key for Fernando Rodney. Young man from El Toro has family and friends here cheering him on. Fastball. He gets the call. So Baker generous all of a sudden. Castro got a pitch a similar position. And the last of the eighth. Off speed way out in front with that changeup. That's a big floater. Mm. It just floats up there and then drops off the table. Okay, what do you throw here, 0 and 2? I w he's not going to get a strike. He's either going to go up the ladder, like we saw earlier, up the ladder with the or another changeup. Arenado was on that one, fouls yeah. it back. You don't want the changeup up at the top of the no. strike zone. Yeah, that last fastball is really tough to get on top of, and thank goodness it was up as high as it was. You know, a good sequence, fastball weight, because I think Arenado might have change up in the back of his mind. Oh. Way outside at 96. He had him set up for, for a freeze fastball on the outside part of the plate, because I think Arenado's got that change up in the back of his mind. Here comes the combio. Oh, he shook it off, fastball away. Late swing punch foul. Count one and two, another fastball away. And strike three called, and Arenado acknowledges he was fooled on that one. Caught the outside corner, a big strikeout to open the ninth. Oh, the cat mouse game, the thinking game for the hitter and the pitcher. And you know, judging by the last few pitches, he had the change up in the back of his mind because he didn't even pull the trigger on that one. Perfectly placed by Rodney. Here's Cargo. Gonzalez walked twice, single, infield hit, and struck out. There's the change, and it drops low. Now he's got a base hit and three advance against Rodney previously. Marista way out in shallow right field, the rover in the shift. And the outfielders all back protecting against the double. There's Amarista. Two and oh. Ninety-five for a strike on the inside corner. Trevor Story, the rookie shortstop, is on deck. Not a good night for Arenado. Swing and a miss. Change up. Here's where I double up on the combio. I say throw him another change up here. See, like, just like I said, a 93 mile an hour <laughs> fastball. 
You only missed by one. But isn't that what's great about it? It's a guessing game for yeah. everybody, right? Yeah, so that's exactly what's going on with Gonzalez. Yeah. He's looking for a pitch. That ball well out of the strike zone, however. Now the full count. Who gives in here? Oh, fastball going inside this time. Swing and a miss, strike three. At 95. Punches out Arenado and Gonzalez. Two times in a row, Arenado pinpoint control. Carlos Gonzalez, outside corner, can't catch up to it. And this copyrighted telecast is presented by authority. The San Diego Padres may not be reproduced, retransferred in any form. The accounts and description in this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the San Diego Padres. Now the 25,503, the Padre faithful on their feet, looking for the final out. As Trevor Story steps in, he has an infield hit and four bats, struck out the last two times. Line to right field, Jankowski's got it, and the Padres win. A hard-earned victory tonight. The 11th save for the arrow that hit the bullseye again from Fernando Rodney, the final. Padres four, Rockies three. Here's Mike Pomerantz. Nick Martin, thank you very much. Save number 11 for Fernando Rodney. Another nice Padre win. They've taken the first two games of this three-game set against the Colorado Rockies. What we see in a couple of moments, we're going to talk with Will Myers about all that went right for him and the team tonight.